Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com, and today I want to talk about the importance of gratitude. Now, sometimes people argue over the wording, what, should you say appreciation or thankfulness? It's all the same thing. They, they literally, gratitude, appreciation, and thankfulness are synonyms. Now, each word has a little different meaning. Just use whichever word works best for you, resonates with you. I don't view gratitude as having any kind of obligation behind it. Matter of fact, appreciation, actually it's part of it, what it could mean, but we're just talking about you're being grateful, thankful to God for the things you have. This should not get into a battle over semantics. And the importance of gratitude is that it puts you in the right vibrational state to where you can receive more. It puts you in the right state of consciousness so you can start operating at the highest levels. This is one of the reasons why I start my day with gratitude and I end my day with gratitude. For about five minutes at a time, I will just state the things I'm grateful for, things I'm thankful for. I'll say, Father, I thank you for my life. I thank you for the breath of life. I thank you for the books I've written. I thank you for the people who read my books. And just go down the list and name all kinds of things. I thank you for the people who watch my videos. I thank you for the people who recommend my videos. I thank you for your wisdom in my life. I thank you that I walk in divine health. I thank you that I walk in divine wealth. And just go down the line and thank God for things. Now you can, don't copy what I just said. I'm just giving you examples. But just go down the line and list stuff where you are. I'm thankful for my computer. I'm thankful for my phone. I'm thankful for my watch. I'm thankful for my clothing. And just thank God for the things you have. Now this may seem trivial. You're thanking God for your clothing? Yes. I appreciate my clothing. I appreciate the blessings of God in my life. I appreciate my food. I'm thankful for my refrigerator. I'm thankful for my freezer. These are things I'm grateful for and I'm thankful for. So don't overlook this importance. Don't overlook the value in being grateful and starting your day in that good high vibrational state. Because if you don't, you tend to do what many people do. They start their day on what? They're immediately checking emails or checking social media. And they're getting themselves in a low vibration, negative state to start their day. If you know the emails that you check each morning, there's going to be a problem somewhere in there. Why in the world are you checking them first thing in the morning? You know you're starting your day out with that uneasy feeling because you're going to have to deal with a problem. Well, don't do that. Start your day with something good. Thinking about the good. Focusing on the good. And you might find that if you start doing this more often, you stop getting those emails where there's always a new problem to solve every morning. This is something people don't grasp. It's the fact that you and your attitude, your mindset, your vibrational state affects the circumstances and experiences you have in life. What you're ruminating on in your spirit, what you're meditating on in your heart, what you're thinking about and giving focus to creates the reality that you're experiencing in life. This is why God said, I set before you life and blessing or death and cursing. Therefore, you choose. And many people don't understand that every day they're making a choice. You choose gratitude, you're choosing that life and blessing column. But you choose to go in and check the complaining emails, the problems, reading the news of the day and the negativity of the day. You've chosen that death and cursing column. All freely your choice. You didn't have to choose one or the other. You weren't forced into it. But many people, unfortunately, are in this rut of choosing the worst, choosing problems, choosing cursing for themselves. And they don't have to be choosing that. And I'm going to give you an example from Job. Many people read the book of Job. They find all kinds of ways to to justify their limited thinking from it, even though there's a lot of great truths in there. 
But Job's very interesting because it says he was perfect and upright. Now, this is must be understood. He's obviously not perfect as God's perfect. He was a man who was doing everything perfect and upright within the limited knowledge he had. Knowledge that was so limited that it says in the scripture that God winked at some of their misconceptions back then. But Job was trying from a pure heart to do everything right that he knew to do. But he had a lot of mistakes and a lot of mistaken ideas about the nature of God and the character of God and what was going on in the universe. He didn't understand all these things. But he did the best with what he had and he was righteous in that regard. And so Job has this suffering, self-caused too. People talk about, well, Satan came and this and that. Job himself says that what I've greatly feared, that thing which I've been fearing and worrying about and anxious over, what I've greatly feared has come upon me. So he even understood that this is something I've been bringing on myself. He didn't know the exact inner workings of it because he said, Naked came I into the world, naked shall I leave. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, obviously we understand from reading the book of Job, God didn't take anything away from him, but Job was being righteous in what he knew. And from that perspective and that particular time in human history, people understood that whatever happened must have been God's will. There's still people today who still cling to this old, ancient, and erroneous way of thinking, which is amazing. They haven't even learned the basic stuff that's been learned thousands of years later. But when Job said that, Job didn't understand that God didn't take anything away from him. And Job later went on, because that was in chapter 1 of the book of Job. In chapter 3, he said, what I've greatly feared has come upon me. So he, he started to understand a little bit here, like, oh, okay, this is something I've been thinking about. I've been meditating on, and I've brought this into my life. And Job was doing his best. But when he said that, he was still grateful he wasn't cursing God. He wasn't angry at God. He wasn't fretting. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Now, he was wrong as far as a, from a factual perspective. He was wrong in that statement. But his heart was right. And this is where it's so important. Many people get caught up in the exact wording of things. And I've told people this before. I've had people ask me to pray for something. And I prayed for the wrong thing. I'm talking about healing. And they still got healed. Because it wasn't about the exact wording. God doesn't need me to explain what illness somebody has. He knows them. It was the faith that went behind it. Even if I was incorrect in my words, the faith was correct. The faith was true. The faith was full. And it got results. And so Job was wrong in his statement. It wasn't God giving and God taking away from him. But his heart was pure. His heart was right. He was blessing the name of the Lord. He was still grateful to the Lord, even in that suffering state he was in. And if you notice at the end, that gratitude, that grateful state of mind he had, and there were some issues, of course, but that grateful state of mind he had got him to the point where he could pray for his friends who came and they were not very helpful. Even though they had a lot of wisdom in what they were saying, it was not wisely applied to him. He was able to pray for them, and God turned his captivity and restored to him twice what he had before. Many people's lives would be better. They'd be greater. They'd be twice what they have, or ten times, or a hundred times what they have today, if they had this state of gratitude. Where even a man, Job, with limited understanding at that particular time about the workings of God and how God does things and God's character and nature, could get the double result that he got Many people are just living in the suffering that Job lived in. They're just getting what they greatly feared. They're constantly reaping that result. But gratitude will bring you into a position of being in the right vibrational state with the right pure heart before God to receive even more blessings. And then you don't have to go through sufferings like Job went through. You don't have to go through suffering like most of the world goes through. Even most professing Christians go through because there's virtually no difference between them and the world as far as behavior, practice, and experience. And yet for you, you know better. 
You can be that grateful person who in all things gives thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, be that grateful person. Take up this mentality each and every day. Start your day with gratitude and end your day with gratitude. And of course, that's not the only times. Go throughout your day. Be grateful. If somebody holds the door open for you, say in, in your mind, don't have to say it out loud. Thank you, Father, for that. You find a penny in the ground. Thank God for that. Be grateful for all the little things and, of course, the big things. And watch as you get more things to be grateful for in your life. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.